Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel M Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial we're going to paint this gorgeous sunset beach. I'm going to teach you how to paint clouds, how to create highlights and light, how to create waves and a realistic ocean sunset and how to create and use things like shimmer and tones to create highlights and shadows in your work so you can paint this gorgeous realistic sunset beach. So let's get into it. Now it's a more advanced tutorial today, but the colors that you need are these cool colors. They are white, yellow, orange, purple, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and black. We can make all colors in the tutorial from these cool colors. Now I have a nine by 12 inch canvas that I've painted burnt sienna, and I've used chalk just to create an outline of where I want everything to be. So I'm gonna have the sun slightly to the right, so I'm gonna have a little wave, a big wave, and loads of wash as it comes towards the beach. And we're gonna create a gorgeous ocean sunset so if anyone would like to jot down the um, outline, feel free to do so and we'll get started. So I'm just going to use some white to block in the sun and I'm just going to create a Naples yellow, which is white, a little bit of yellow, just a little bit, and a dot of black, literally a dot. So too much here, so just get tiny dots and just add it. And you should get this creamy color yellow and that's perfect for um, creating heat around your sun. So what we're going to do is just create a light effect around the sun and we're just going to block in our painting and cover up some of that burnt sienna with this nice yellow Naples yellow. So all I'm doing is creating a light color on the cloud lines and it's just a highlight, a light effect around the sun. Now to get yellow ochre, I'm going to show you how to mix that. You just get yellow, a bit of purple and a dot of orange. So yellow, a bit of purple and a dot of orange and you should get the same color that I've got pre-mixed. And that is yellow okra, I think it's pronounced. So if you want to get this sort of golden dark color, you just mix that color. So yellow, a little bit of purple and a dot of orange. And we're just gonna block in the shadow of our clouds. So around the sun, it's pretty bright. So that's why we're using sort of dark tones, but they're still very yellowy. So there's still a bit of heat in them for the brightness and the heat of the sun and while we've got that i'm just going to block in just roughly where i want the clouds we might paint over that but it's just to put an impression where i want things to be and then all i'm going to do is get some yellow and orange more yellow than anything so some yellow just watch if you just add a little bit of orange you should get this golden yellow tone i've got pre-mixed here so look exactly the same so yellow and a little bit of orange and again, we're just gonna add some heat on the clouds just around our sun. So if you think of the sun as this burning, burning candle, so to speak, it's really, really bright around it. So we wanna emphasize that in the tones. So we're gonna get some orange, a little bit of black, and we're gonna create a nice sort of warm gray. So we're gonna get a little bit of purple. So orange, a tiny bit of black, and we should get this warm gray. So orange, black, and a tiny bit of purple. And you should get this hot grey colour. And all we're going to do is we're just going to darken up just the edges because they're getting less sunlight. And we're just going to create some of the shadow tones on our clouds. Now, as I say, we probably will paint over bits of bobs of this, but if by using dark colours, if anyone notices from my tutorials, I always paint in the waves in dark colours with acrylics. So if we dry this now, before we start adding the sky, if you use dark colours, at least when you paint over it, you still see where things are. So we're going to do a really dark sky today. We're going to paint some blue, some purple and a dot of black. And we're going to really frame the painting by creating a really dark tone so our sunset really stands out against it and gives a really bright contrast. So by doing that, we're going to make our blocking in very, very dark by using blue, a little bit of purple and a dot of black. And we're just going to make this, it's cobalt blue, sorry. And as I say, we're just gonna block in with a big brush. Don't worry if it's streaky, don't worry if it's messy. We just wanna cover up as much of that burnt sienna as we can. Now, if you watch any of my other tutorials, we always get lighter in tone as we move towards the horizon. So to do that, we want to trick the eye and make a realistic painting. We wanna make the sky lighter in color. So we're gonna add some cerulean blue, which is more a turquoisey sort of blue. So we're gonna add a little bit of cerulean blue 
and a little bit of white to the mix and that should just make it a little bit softer a little bit more pastel in tone so just a bit more cerulean blue to the mix and we're just going to make a lighter tone as we move downwards towards the horizon so if you think all horizons are lighter than tone so no matter what color you paint your sky you always want to make the horizon slightly lighter and it's a good trick it just tricks the eye of the viewer and just makes your sky look more realistic so all we're doing as i say don't worry if it's scruffy i'm just mixing the two colors together and i'm just bridging the two tones together just so they mix but don't worry we'll fix this in a minute when we go over it and we'll neaten everything up it's just to block it in so as we move right down to the horizon, we want to get as light as we can. So we're going to add more white to that mix and just make it really, really pastel now. And we're just going to block that in and just mix it to the previous tone. So don't worry if you cover up some of those clouds, you should be able to see them because they're in a dark tone. So please dry it and I'm just going to fast forward it. So I'm just going to put the speed of the video up a little bit, but I'm just going to reapply all the paint. So it was um, blue purple cobalt blue purple and a dot of black to make the darkest color that you want in your top right and left corner and just on the edge the top edge of your painting so we just want to frame it so look once you put a second coat on it's much thicker it's much brighter in um, tone and it just gets rid of all your streak marks so if you ever have any streaks with acrylics because acrylics are very watery just dry it with a hairdryer and then just go over the top in the exact same tone with a nice large brush and you should be able to blend it. So just by adding cerulean blue and a little bit of white, tiny bit of black, just a dot again of black just to desaturize it. We're just going to mix those tones together. Look, it's so much brighter just because it's got a second layer of paint. So that's the trick with acrylics. They are very streaky, very thin because of the water. So just by making X's, all I'm doing is just blending the tones together. So the dark blue and the lighter shade of blue, I'm just blending together, trying to get my transitions a bit more nicer. So going back and forth between the two tones, look, that's all I'm doing is going back between the dark tone and the lighter tone. And if there's any of these little gaps where we're going to put the clouds, we'll just put the clouds back in later. And then just adding more white to that mix just to make it more pastel as you come towards the sun and the horizon so as you move lower in the sky and what we should have in about two seconds just a little bit more cerulean blue just to mix it <laughs> i love that word cerulean so we're just going to mix the two tones together and we should have a nice seamless transition for our background nice and easy We've got a nice gradient in our sky. Look at that, perfect. Now please dry it because we're gonna add all the highlights on the top. But you can see just from having a darker tone that it really frames the painting and just makes it look much more realistic. So when we add all our clouds and our highlights and shadows over the top now, it tricks the eye and just makes your work look more real. So all I'm doing, I'm using some bright white just for the sun and then I'm just using some cad yellow, some bright yellow just around the sun and then I'm just creating that yellowy orange colour that we made previously. So it was just yellow and a little bit of orange, more yellow than orange and you should get this golden yellow. And all we're going to do is we're just going to block in this highlight on the clouds. So if you just think like I was saying to you, just think of a fire, anything around the flame is going to be very, very hot. You don't want to touch a fire. So think of the sun like that. So we want to sort of match the tones. And we're going to use that yellow okra, which was yellow, little bit of purple, and a dot of orange. So yellow, little bit of purple, dot of orange. And you can add a dot of black if you choose to, just to darken it up. So if you want a darkier, darkier, dark, mustier version like I've got here, you just add a dot of purple, a dot of black, and you should get a nice musty yellow okra. So all I'm doing, look, I'm just creating sort of the shadows of the clouds. And all it is, if you think of the tones, as you move away from the sun, the tones are getting cooler, so they're getting darker and they're getting cooler. But because they're still hot, because they're still around that sun, they are just a little bit cooler. So we're going to make a nice hot tone. So we're going to get purple and orange. So purple and orange mixed together. I'm just going to make this nice, more orange than anything. So a little bit of purple and some orange a dot of yellow and a dot of white. We're going to make this sort of hot tan sort of colour. 
and we're just going to create a nice sort of hot purple around the sun. So all I'm doing, I'm just blending it into that yellow okra. So again, if I'm going back between the two tones and I'm just trying to get like a seamless transition. And all it is, I'm just trying to get realistic tones around my sun, but I still want them as shadow tones. So when we put the highlights on afterwards, so a good rule of thumb is always put the darker color on first and then put the highlights on second. So to make a warm gray, all we're gonna do is add some uh, black, some orange and a dot of purple, and you should get this nice warm gray. So purple, orange, and a bit of black. Oh, and some white, excuse me, and some white, just to make it less harsh. And all we're doing, look, we're just getting darker as we move away from the sun. So now I'm just going back to that hotter tone, and around the sun I'm gonna create clouds. We're just gonna do the shadows of the clouds in and around the sun. So these are hot clouds because they're getting beamed with light and heat from that sun. So all around the sun, we're just creating hot, brighter clouds. Now to make them just a bit more hot and a bit more brighter, you can add a tiny bit more orange to your mix. And just around the sun, just going upwards, just create a bit more orangey version of the same tone. And these are just all the shadows that are getting some light. So what we're doing first, we're going to build up our clouds and then we'll put the highlights all around it. So we do the shadows first and any gaps in your canvas where you've got some burnt sienna, you can turn them into clouds. So we're trying to create the light effect. So we're using the tones to trick the eye. So we're going to get some of that warm grey and just mix it into some yellow okra. So warm grey and yellow okra combined. Just so we've got this purpley yellow so just a darker tone. And as we move away from the sun, the tone is still a warm tone, but it's getting darker and we're just getting cooler in tone and we're just gonna make some clouds. So if I've got any burnt sienna light here, I'm just gonna cover it up where we had those little gaps, where we had those bits of clouds, we're just gonna make into better clouds now. So all I'm gonna do is just go off diagonally in different directions, just make splats and create clouds. So I'm just going to get some of that warm grey, which is a darker tone, and add a little bit of black to the mix, So and purple. So a much darker and cooler tone, so black, purple, warm grey. Going to make a really dark shadow tone, and these are all the parts of the clouds that are the harshest shadows, so we want to create a real dark contrast. So we're going to use the left hand side of all the um, clouds, just emphasize all the areas that aren't getting any sunlight so they're really dark in tone and we're just going to create shapes again in our clouds so as i say as you go up towards the top of the canvas you just want to use the dark tone try to cover up any of that burnt sienna that you had before and just try to leave one side of the clouds lighter in tone and one side the left hand side or the under sorry the upper side just so it looks like it's not getting any of the um light and it's creating a shadow so when you're happy with it please dry your painting because we're going to use really bright highlights now we don't want them mixing with the murky black so please dry your painting with a hairdryer and we're going to create some of that yellow and orange so yellow and a little bit of orange and we're going to add a load of white to it so yellow orange and lots and lots of white a tiny bit of black just to desaturize it and we're just going to make a really sort of lovely highlight color so yellow dot of orange dot of black lots and lots of white and you should get this lovely creamy peach color and we're just going to outline some of our clouds so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to outline some of the clouds and we're going to create highlights so where we've just done the shadows we're going to create the highlights on the opposite sides and where there are literally clouds around the sun if you imagine the sun is so strong that the light going around it just literally outlines the actual clouds you get this lovely gorgeous sort of light effect if you ever see even on a um, blue sunny sky you get these lovely white clouds and it almost has like a luminous white outline so what we're trying to do by creating a sunset so we're creating this lovely sunset beach as the tones get darker, because obviously it's later in the evening, or this could be a sunrise even, 
we want to create sort of really bright contrasting tones to um, convey that. So by using this really bright orange and just outlining some of these um, clouds, we can make it look more 3D and more realistic. So look, all I'm doing is outlining some of the sides and it's just to imply where the light is going around the cloud and creating highlights. And I'm creating some odd little sort of floater clouds and shapes just so it looks like highlights. So it's a really easy trick. As I say, just create some little dashes, some little marks just to create the look of clouds sort of breaking off. Because all clouds are nice and fluffy, just by having little dots and sort of streamer ones, it just makes it look like they've broken off. And it just looks like some of the sunlight is just creating that lovely outline. So look, really easy to do. You can do it really, really quick. So if you choose one side for the dark, for the shadow, and you choose the other side for the light, you can create this gorgeous sort of 3D effect. It's a super easy trick. So look, create some floaters, create some little streamer clouds, just by pushing your brush and just creating little squiggles on your canvas. So when you're happy with it, we're gonna use a brighter tone now. So we're gonna mix some white, and a dot of yellow so lots and lots and lots of white and a dot of yellow and we're going to create a really luminous sort of bright almost off white so it's just got a dot of yellow in it and we're just going to highlight some of these clouds so again it's just the same technique what we want to do is just go around the clouds try to create a highlight on one side try to outline the ones nearest to the sun just so they are the most luminous just so they stand out more so super easy technique. So again, just using tones to trick the eye. A lot of these um, tutorials, all we're doing, I'm trying to teach you how to use tones to create realism. So I keep saying to you, if you mix the tones correctly and you work on your tones, your things like your drawing and all your um, skills and how to um, create realistic looking work will come but if you use the right tones to begin with it will keep you in good stead so when you advance and your drawing gets better and your compositions and the way you think about how to set things up in your paintings to make it look more real that will come afterwards so just by learning the tones and as everyone's been so good and been asking for more advanced tutorials this one is just about an hour so I thought it'd be perfect for people to learn we have um, over 40 tutorials now on the channel, or acrylic painting tutorials. So please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And please turn the bell notification so you're updated with a new tutorial every single week. So by just using the highlight tone and going around one side, we can give the impression of light. And obviously we've got the darker shadows on the other side. And it just gives a really nice contrast is a really really nice feel just as I say creates the realism so we're gonna get some of that yellow and orange and the painting's pretty dry and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use a blender brush and I'm gonna take most of the paint off I'm just using my scruffy painting clothes and I've got hardly any paint on my blender brush and all I'm gonna do is glaze the painting now it's dry like a crayon so if you imagine like a wax crayon all I'm doing is just sort of glazing that area of the clouds just to imply the heat of the sun and just sort of blend the tone in from the, um, the colour of the sun. So look, I'm wiping away all the, most of the paint and I've just got a little bit and I'm just going to do the same with the sky. So I'm just blending hardly any paint and I'm just gently pushing down with my blender brush and I'm just blending that tone into the sky and it's just to basically create a nice transition in my sky and now that I've done that I'm just gonna go over the top and just put back my sun and I'm just gonna put a bit more paint at the bottom but look once your painting's dry you can do this with anything so you can lighten up areas you can darken areas so say it was the opposite say you wanted to create some shadow you could use a darker tone and make an area darker you can do almost like shading so if you had anything like you wanted to blend a tone and it's great for blending two different tones so once your painting's dry you can just do that so we're going to create some rays so we're going to do the exact same trick i've got hardly any paint on my brush and i've got some white and a dot of yellow and i'm just going to come out and do some straight lines straight up from the sun 
So I'm just creating diagonal lines, rubbing off near enough all the paint. I've got a really thin layer of paint on my dry brush, on a dry canvas. But because the brush is so smooth, I'm just creating lovely straight lines. I'm creating lovely, easy peasy straight lines. Look, straight up. I'm just creating the illusion of sunbeams. And the great thing is, is if you have a dry canvas and dry painting, if you do cock up your um, sunbeam, if you do make a mistake, you can always use a baby wipe and just wipe it completely off. The great thing is if you've dried your painting, you won't lose any of the detail underneath. Now, all I'm going to do, just a bit like the sun, whilst I've blended the tones in, I'm just going back and I'm just highlighting areas. And this is just with that white and yellow, it's just to show bits where those sun rays uh, are touching certain clouds. It's just to give an impression of a highlight and just again to make it more striking. So with this more advanced tutorial, you'll see a lot of the times in the tutorial, I go back and forth. Sometimes with painting, it's not a generic one, two, three or ABC steps. Sometimes you have to feel your way out. Like I've said multiple times in these tutorials, you have to sort of do a layer, see if it works. If it doesn't, maybe lighten up an area, darken up an area. And you're just going, as I say, with your intuition and your experience. The more you do it, um, I specialize in seascapes and I specialize in sunsets. So I can do it almost without looking at a reference photo nowadays. I've done it so many times and that will come with experience. So don't, don't worry when you're first trying out. And if you have to go back and forth and you have to um, try something and then fix it and try it again, that's all part and parcel of being an artist. So I've measured a nice straight horizon and I've used some chalk and some painting tape just to create a horizon. And what we're going to do, we're just going to block in the waves. So we're going to get some black and some blue. So we're going to just create this really dark Prussian blue, which is just black and blue. We're going to use a flat brush so it's nice and straight. And first of all, we're just going to put in the shadow of our wave. So what we're doing is we're just creating a really nice dark shadow. If you think this shadow, um, this wave, excuse me, has its back to the sun so it's dark shadow um, is going to be really dark and then we've got this nice sort of curve water this nice sort of um, carpet sort of effect as it comes up onto the beach and you get this lovely sort of sea froth so all we're doing we're just going to create some waves and we're just going to create a little wave here not as big as the one in the foreground because obviously it's further back all we're going to do is just use that dark tone just to block in so we know where everything is and we'll just have some waves up the top here there we go easy peasy and while we've got that really dark shadow tone i'm just going to block in the sand we'll just block that in with the exact same color so all it is is blue and black so more black than blue and it's just a really dark shadow tone just so we've got where the beach is going to be so we've got this dry, lovely, um, dark shadow tone, and it's nice and dry, but so we're going to do exactly what we did with the sky. We're going to block in, now we've got this dark tone so we know where everything is. We're going to use some of that yellow and orange to create the same uh, color as we had around the sun. And we're just going to use a big brush, and the great thing is, is that really dark tone will shine through so we can see a rough outline where everything is. And we can just block in using a big round-headed brush just some of that yellow and orange and that is going to be the light reflecting downwards onto the water so we're trying to match the the lights and what i'm going to do actually is i'm going to create some wet sand you get that shimmering sand where the water peels back and you get that lovely sort of glowing shimmering um, shiny wet sand so all i'm going to do look i'm just going to give it two coats of paint really really quickly there we go just an extra coat just so it's a bit more vibrant a bit more bright and lovely so it's just orange it's just yellow and a little bit of orange and then what we're gonna do we're just gonna mix some of that light blue so it was purple and cobalt blue so purple cobalt blue lots of white and it should make it a nice purpley blue there's a little tiny bit of Karunian blue and we've just got this musty sort of pastel blue and we're just gonna gradually try not to mix it too much if your orange and yellow is still wet because you don't want to get green so if your um, painting is still wet maybe give it a little bit of a dry 
but all we're going to do is just try to edge that color and this is just going to be the lighter tone going towards the middle so again just try with a large brush just try to block it in the best you can don't worry if it's streaky don't worry if it's unneat we'll always neaten it up afterwards it's more just to match the colors so we're just trying to match the transition in the tones and if your yellow and orange is a little bit drier you can just start sort of blending the two tones together now we're going to try and match this really dark tone so that was blue purple and a bit of black so blue purple and a bit of black So we want the sky and the water to match. So we want to have like a mirror effect. So that all we're gonna do, watch, is just frame our painting by using that really dark tone and gradually blur it into the previous tone. So all we're doing is trying to neaten up the transitions and just blur the really dark tone into that previous lighter tone. Just match the tones and all that is is as the sunlight fades away that tone gets darker and cooler now if you've got a, um, a blender brush or you've got, just got a soft brush you can always just blend the two tones together so just gradually just soften the transitions up by just blending the dark and the light tone together now when you're happy with it if you please dry it the reason that I want you to dry it is if I just blend this transition here yeah, the reason I want you to dry it is because of the middle is a bright yellowy orange if we're going to add some darker waves that are blue over the top we don't want to get green you don't really get a horrible musty green just because we want to match the sky so one of the reasons we want to um, dry our work correctly is to kind of like ensure it so look if you dry it and you make a mistake you can always use a baby wipe and wipe it off so all i'm doing i'm just using the middle tone that sort of light bluey purple so it was blue purple and white a tiny bit of Korean blue and I'm just going to create a blend into that orange now if the orange was wet it would make this horrible musty yellowy green and look I'm just moving it into the dark tone at the same time and because it's dry I've got hardly any paint on my brush a bit like how we did the sunbeams I'm just merging the colors together so that is the great thing about acrylic paints that is so forgiving they're so easy and as I say if you've dried a layer so if you're watching this at home and you're painting along if you dry each time your work and before you move on to the next stage if you make a mistake you can always just wipe it off with a baby wipe and then just dry it again and just paint over it so that's the great thing about acrylics they're so easy compared to oil paints they're so forgiving and they're less messy and they're cheaper so they're really good to start with as you're a beginner and then the more you um, work on your skills oil paints are much more realistic and much more um, if if you know how to use them the sheen of them would look like water and light and they're a bit darker so the shadows look much more dark and the colors are more vibrant so acrylics are brilliant for starting and as we move along with the tutorials hopefully I'll start doing some combinations where we do acrylics and oils and I'll show you how to use the best of both worlds so look all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some of that black and blue that Prussian blue and I'm just gonna put back the waves which we had so just really quickly get some black and blue now we've got that lovely underpainting we've got the lovely transition so just think of what we did with the sky we put the underpainting on first and then we put all the shadows and the highlights so we're going to do exactly the same thing with the waves now what's really really great about a flat brush is you can work on your straight lines I'm um, one of these people I'm not particularly great at painting things like buildings I'm not really great at painting straight lines and I find a flat brush just because it's like a flat headed screwdriver it's completely flat it's really easy to use for things like waves um, especially if you think of like waves as you move towards the horizon they get less bobbly and they get more straight so by using a flat headed brush it's much easier to do straight lines and all I'm doing look I'm just leaving gaps in the underpainting now we've got this lovely transition of color and by using the darker tone we can give the impression of waves now as we move towards the um, sorry I've got a big cut on my arm where I wore a Fitbit and it 
burnt me for some reason. <laughs> I think I was doing too much exercise. So um, yeah, I had a bit of a reaction to my Fitbit. So if I, if I look like I've got a junkie's arm, it's just where my um, my Fitbit suddenly uh, gave me a nasty mark. Yeah, all I did there was just add some orange and purple to like we did with the clouds, and I'm just making the um, the waves a little bit more hotter in tone as they move towards the hot sun so just by using orange and purple they're not as dark as the blue and black and it's just getting a bit more of a transition towards the hot sun so the painting is starting to take shape it's looking really really nice so let's remove our tape now we've got this horizon done and we'll rub away any chalk that we've got just where we measured things and as i say we'll neaten everything up as we go along so we're gonna get some of that black and blue so just make a really dark tone, so black and blue, and we're first going to put in the shadow. So just like we did with the clouds, we're going to make our shadows really, really dark, just so we can put that in first, and then we'll put the highlights on the top. So black and blue. And all we're going to do is we're going to put in the real harsh shadows of the wave. Now, as I say, with the clouds, we're going to kind of do some back and forth with the water. Because we've laid the underpaint in, that's brilliant, and we're going to put in the shadows for the wave and we'll do some of the froth. Because we want to match the sky and we want to match everything, sometimes you have to go a bit back and forth. We're going to put in things like sea foam and we're going to put in not too much detail because I don't want to make it too harsh. So I'm just adding some orange and purple to our mix just to warm it up. Yeah, so we're going to add a lot of detail as we move towards the beach. Um, but just like our sunset, we might have to go a little bit back and forth simply just to match the lights. That is the thing with the more advanced tutorials. If you ever watch things like a time lapse, you probably don't notice when you're watching painters, but they're going back and forth on areas, back and forth, back and forth, just to make it perfect. Well, when you're actually doing a step by step tutorial, as I say, a lot of people sort of skip areas, they sort of um, do a little cross dissolve or something, you miss that bit. But that's normally what they're doing. They're normally just reworking areas. And as I say, there's nothing wrong with that. It's very hard sometimes to nail something first time. So sometimes you have to go back and forth. So we're just gonna get some uh, purple, white, and blue, and a dot of black, so purple, white, and blue. And we're gonna make the froth of the sea. So as the wave comes towards the um, shore, towards the beach, it gives all that sort of froth and you get that sort of cascade of the wave and all I'm going to do is my flat brush I'm just going to splat it and I'm going to cry to create the illusion of a wave so the wave sort of comes down like a scoop and by using this really nice dark sort of purpley bluey tone we're just going to create the illusion of the um, the sea foam and by having that really dark um, shadow tone we've got a lovely sort of shape for the wave and we're just going to have this one. We just have some quite like a violent wave in the back that can be coming up. It's going to bubble up. So all I'm doing, leaving gaps in the underpainting. So I'm leaving some of that shadow tone just to imply so it looks a bit more 3D. And just by using that tone, just create a little bit of realism. And I'm just going to add a little bit of white to the mix just to make a lighter shade. So just add in a little bit more white and we're just going to add some highlights on it. So just like the clouds, you put the shadow tone on first and then you just put the highlights on top. Now the thing is, as I keep saying to you with acrylics, they always dry a bit darker. So, and things like highlights, especially things like white or bright yellow, one of the reasons I paint my canvas burnt sienna and I give my um, things like my sky two coats of paint is because when you're using light pastel tones, they tend to um, with acrylics because they're watery they tend to pick up the color that's underneath so even if you're using jet white and you're play painting on top of blue your white will turn a bit bluey so sometimes you just have to go over your highlights and give it two coats um, just to make them pop so look all I'm doing is just using some of that dark tone just to really emphasize our wave just give it a nice straight edge and while we're there we're just going to make it so it's more prominent and the wave sticks out so it looks more 3D. It's coming towards our beach. So that can be the cap of the wave, sort of the bit that rolls over like a tube. And the same with this one, just to make it nice and dark. I've got a bit of burnt sienna there, so I'm just gonna cover that up. So I'm gonna swap over some more black and blue and I'm just gonna fill that area in and that looks much more like the shadow part of the wave. 
and we'll use that to create a really dark shadow underneath because you get a nice shadow as the wave cascades down onto the beach and oh I've got a bit of a mucky brush but never mind we're gonna add some blue and white and purple so the same color as we did the foam and we're just going to create some sea foam so we're going to create a nice ridge of the um, the wave as it comes up so the ocean water comes up towards the beach and it sort of retracts back and you get that lovely sort of carpet ridge and we're just going to create sort of squiggles so we're just going to add a little bit of white and cerulean blue to the mix just to make it a little bit lighter a little bit of cobalt blue and we're going to create zigzags so what we're going to do just like the highlights we're going to put the darker tones on first and then we'll put the highlights over the top so all i'm doing is just creating zigzags now these are all the sort of veins that you get in the water where you get the wave and you get all the sort of splosh when the water comes up towards the beach it gives this lovely sort of veiny look it's really weird it's like um all this sort of foam and bubbles and it creates this sort of texture look so we want to try to um, recreate that so by just creating sort of zigzags coming towards the shore and sort of joining some up and leaving others and because we've got the lovely underpainting the sort of color underneath it tricks your eye so if we get some white and a little bit of purple I've got a bit of a mucky brush here I don't know why so we're just gonna get some white and purple and we're just gonna go over the top with a highlight. So we're just gonna make it darker. Now, as I say just previously, the white will pick up that blue. It will pick up and it will dry a lot darker. So even though it looks really bright now, if in about five minutes later in the video, it's gonna dry a lot darker. Just like our wave, if you look at our foam on our waves now, they're starting to turn a bit more purple. They're getting a bit more darker. So that's what I was saying to you. Sometimes you just have to give your critics two coats so th to emphasize things just to make everything brighter. So it's just having a bit of patience, just reworking areas. As I say, there's nothing hard. It's nothing, even though it's a little bit more advanced this tutorial, it's nothing too strenuous. Going over some paint twice is not really anything severe. It's not going to blow your brain. It's all quite easy to do so look all I'm doing just like the sky I'm just trying to create bubbles in the water and sort of foam little dots and I'm just going over the top of the foam see just to create some texture in it and as I say just emphasize the highlights by just giving it a second coat of paint as I say on some of my previous tutorials you can use a palette knife if you want to give your um, sea foam or your wave um, the sort of cascading water on your wave, the sort of foamy bit, you can use a palette knife. Palette knives are excellent to create things like sea spray. Um, you can even get a little bit of water and just hardly any white paint, dip your little brush and flick your brush towards the painting and that will create spray so just like you would create things like stars in the night sky by sort of spraying the canvas you can create sort of the spray of your wave so we're just going to go over some areas so i'm going to use some of that white and yellow just to put some highlights in my wave so again trying to match the light so where the light is coming down from the center by using some of that really bright luminous white and yellow we're going to try to match that and again by having the shadow tone on first it gives the illusion of texture and it gives the illusion of more three dimensions and a bit more realism and by using that bright tone we can just again just go over the top of some of our squiggles just to make them look more realistic and look like the light is cascading on them so I keep saying to you, it's all about patience. It's all about building steps in your work. So once you know the steps, so by doing things like the underpainting first, trying to match the light, then putting the shadow colors that you think you're gonna need first, and then reworking it with the brighter tones. Now, as I say, if you have to go back and forth, you'll see me in a minute, you are, we'll have to go back and forth because we're gonna do a bit of blending just to make everything look less harsh and look a bit more realistic. That's fine, but if you know the basics, which I'm doing now, look, right on cue. So look, just by blending using, now everything is dry, just using some of that orange and yellow that we've used previously in my gorgeous blender brush, what we're doing, I've got hardly any paint, I'm just gradually just sort of shading areas. So as I say, it's like having a coloring pencil or a crayon. I'm literally on a dry canvas with a dry brush and hardly any paint on my brush. 
I'm just coloring areas with that paint. So I'm just blending, I'm just getting a really nice transition in my light effect. So I'm just trying to make certain areas lighter, I'm trying to make the waves and the transitions look more realistic. So you can do this for anything, as I say you can do this the opposite way, you can use this for light or you can use this for shadow. So say you wanted to make your corners darker or you were painting a person and you wanted to shade one side of their face or their body. It's a great cheat, it's a great way to do it. So as I say, hopefully these tutorials are giving you lots of practical acrylic painting tips that you can go away and use on your own artwork, not necessarily just these recreations. And as I say, because I've done the blending, I've got to put back my cloud. So it's just going back and forth. So where I like certain things through bits and bobs, I reposition things. Now the only thing I don't like here, I don't like how the horizon, uh, the clouds are a bit too high from the horizon. There's not much going on between the um, the cloud level and the sea. It's a bit of a big gap and it's just a bit orangey and a bit boring. So I think I'll put some clouds in there in a minute. But I'll just put really emphasize these highlights. I want to really make them pop. Look, see, as I say, look, just going over the top with the same color paint just makes everything super bright, makes everything really potent. So just when people go, how do you make your paintings look so vibrant? It's just literally by spending the time and re going over the top with the same paint. Because as I say, because the acrylics paint, um, it takes a bit. It absorbs a bit of the undercolor. If you want to really make your highlights pop, you want to just rework them by going over the top. So all we did there was, do you remember it was orange and yellow, so more yellow than orange. So yellow, a little bit of orange and lots and lots of white to get a sort of really nice bright peach tone. And we're just going to use that as a little bit of a darker highlight. So these are just a little bit cooler highlights. And what that does as well, it just sort of matches the yellowy orange that we're using for our sunlight in the middle. So again, it's just between the transitions, there's not so much of a jump between the really luminous and the um, really darks. So look, just using some of that really orangey peachy tone just to highlight the top of my water, just again to make it look more real. So these are parts of the water that the light is just really contrasting and just creating specks and bright bits popping out. So it's really cool. Please, if anyone has any ideas um, for tutorials, I'm going to do a few th things. I think I'm going to do some mountain ones in the next few weeks, and I might start doing some animal ones for people. Um, if people have any ideas for things they want to learn, things like clouds or trees, the only thing I don't really do is people. I, I don't mind doing odd people, but I don't really like doing portraits and stuff. I'm more of a landscape artist. So if anyone's got any... Um, uh, what's it called ideas for tutorials or anything like that anything they want to cover please put them in the comments below and I see even if it's just um, techniques for acrylic painting that people are struggling on so things like look like the light and the sunbeams and things like that if anyone would like any tutorials covered just put them in the comments below there's no wrong answers like hopefully I can include them in a tutorial for you and it's great feedback for me so it's great feedback um, to see um, what people would really um, use some help on. As I say, the channel hopefully is for artists to help artists. So I'm one of you, I paint all the time, so I'm always learning, I'm always watching tutorials, I'm always trying to get better. So if any of you have any ideas or anything, please just put them in the comments below. So I, as I say, I know sometimes it's a bit annoying watching me go back and forth um, trying to highlight areas and then repainting over the top and repainting over the top. Sometimes, as I say, you can overwork a painting. I do that all the time. I'm just using some a fine liner and I'm just using some of that warm grey. Do you remember it was um, purple, orange and a little bit of black and some white and you get this lovely warm grey. Yeah, and basically, um, 
I do that all the time. Sometimes, especially with the tutorials, I'm so concentrating on the camera and stopping and starting it for editing purposes and things. It takes me out of my flow state and it takes me, it makes me much more self-conscious. And when I'm self-conscious, I don't relax. And when I don't relax, I don't necessarily do my best work. So some of the um, tutorials, um, they're a bit stop start simply for that reason. So look, all I'm doing is just getting some black and blue and I'm just putting back in some of the shadows. So I'm just putting some of these waves in just to make it look a bit more prominent. Now we've done that lovely transition with the colors. I'm gonna go right up to the top just to sort of frame the painting just to make it look really, really nice. So just using my flat brush. So yeah, sometimes I recently did a landscape painting which was a forest painting and I, um, I filmed it for you guys and literally I had to walk away from it and come back to it the following day and I repainted it in oils. So funny enough, it was oils over the top of acrylics. It's in the forest painting, it's a landscape painting. And um, yeah, and just from literally taking a break, getting out my own way, putting some music on, I was able to finish it and make it look almost photorealistic in about half the time that when I did the whole painting took me about 10 hours the first day and the second day took me about an hour. <laughs> so sometimes it's, as I say, when you're in the flow state, you can just do things. So what I'm using is some of that warm gray just to frame the clouds, just to make them cooler and just to make the sunlight in the middle look more prominent. So as I say, sometimes it's best to just get out your own way, relax. Nothing is wrong. As Bob Ross would say, there's only happy accidents. Everyone is learning. You always can get better. So I'm just using some bright yellow in my blender brush, Brenda brush, <laughs> some, uh, just to blend some bright yellow. And we're just going to cascade some shimmer of that light coming down onto the water here. So we, again, we're just trying to match the sun all the way down from the beach. So if you think of our sunset, we want the sunset to match the beach. And as I say, I think this cloud looks a bit boring and I think it's a bit too high. Um, from the water so look if this is the water and that's shimmering down there's a big gap isn't there between that so let's put some more clouds in why not let's just make some more clouds because that's the great thing as i say like there's no right or wrong sometimes you just think well do you know what just doesn't look right let's just put something else in so we're going to add some clouds and because we got that nice blend in the background it sort of frames it doesn't it so that's cool isn't it so why not let's just make a little island and I can teach you I don't always put islands in but I think it's just I've been putting them in lately just to teach you about light so what I'm gonna do is use some black and blue and I've used a nice bit of tape just to make it straight now all I'm gonna do is get some burnt sienna so that was the color I just painted my canvas at the beginning so all burnt sienna is is um, orange and a little bit of purple and maybe a bit of brown I think is burnt sienna but all it is is a very ready brown and all I'm going to do is mix some bright orange into it. So I'm going yellow and orange, so that yellowy orange colour. Then I'm going bright orange, so bright orange here and then burnt sienna and then into blue and black. And you should get a nice transition where it looks like the coast in the background so let's have the bright oh god i've just smeared it all oh, bloody hell <laughs> so let's remove my tape and we'll fix it never mind no one will know it's not like we're filming or anything yeah so like um so just have some of the burnt sienna going into the black and blue and it's got a really nice transition and all that does is it makes it look like far away cliffs or far away land and because of the light it just matches now please dry it before you put the tape over the top like i am doing so please dry what you just painted and what we're going to do we're going to take our flat brush and we're just going to mix some of that orangey purple do you remember it was orange purple and a tiny bit of black just a tiny bit and we're just going to add a little bit of that yellowy orange to it so we've got this nice browny color and we just go right up to the tape and we're just going to put a nice flat line just so we've got a nice prominent line for the sea and the horizon just so we've got a nice divide between the sea and the horizon and we're just going to make this wave in the for um, sorry in the background just a bit more prominent remove the tape should have a lovely straight horizon we've got that um lovely sort of cliff in the background if 
any of your tape rips off any of the paint, just go over the top. We're just gonna get some white and yellow. We're just gonna put some of the shimmer coming down from the sun. So if you just imagine that shimmer is going straight down. So all you do is just do it a straight line down. Just blend this little bit here, just where we put that really dark tone. I just wanna make it a little less harsh. So I'm just gonna go over the top again. I know it's annoying, but sorry. <laughs> I am a perfectionist, I can't help it. It's a bit my clouds back for the 10th time. <laughs> so as I say, it's just going back and forth. You don't have to do this if you're watching at home. You don't have to be as, um, uh, how would you put it? Pedantic as me, that's a big word. That's a fancy posh British word, isn't it? Pedantic. <laughs> so look, all I'm doing is just putting the shimmer back on. But I keep saying to you, the more advanced you get and the more you take your time and the, as long as you try your best at anything and you keep working it, you'll always do well. So always try your best, always keep going. And as long as you give yourself 100% effort and that's the best you can do, you'll be proud of it. So that looking cool. Wow. So let's put just some shimmer on this. Excellent. Just make everything look a bit neater with the same colours. Just some of that dark. Just make my wave just look a bit more beefy, a bit more chunky. For some reason I've got a big splat there. Never mind, just rub it out with my finger. So there we go. Easy peasy. And to just finish her off, I just want to make this wave a little bit darker because I think it will look better. I think it will just frame it a bit better. And I'm just going to put some of the shimmer just real close, just using some bright white, tiny dot of yellow, but predominantly white. And as I say, just going over the top just to make it and emphasize it and just give this um, part of our ocean just a bit more realism and just make our froth stand out on our wave just to make it look more real. So these are all the bits that are shimmering in the light. So just like the clouds, they're getting a really high contrast. And as I say, it's just white and a dot of yellow. And cause it matches all with the sunlight, it should be looking funky and really, really cool. And all I'm gonna do is just add some purple and white just to make a cooler version just to the right and the left of it. So purple and lots and lots of white just to frame it. And I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of that yellowy orange just in the middle, just here in the middle, just to match the sun, just to match it so it looks like it's shimmering on the water. So just yellow and orange, not too much, just a little bit. And what you can do is do a cheat, what I'm gonna do in about two seconds. Is if there's a harsh transition, just smudge it with your finger. There we go. What a professional, look at that. <laughs> So this is absolutely perfect. So we got there in the end. So you have painted a fantastic real life beach sunset. So we've learned how to do light. You've learned how to blend. You've learned how to do a gradient in your ocean and in your sky. You've learned how to create lovely realistic clouds, how to add shadow and highlights even on the island. You've learned how to do ocean waves. You've learned how to bring them forward using darker tones and push them back using lighter tones. We've even got shimmer on the water. So it's advanced, but I think you all do so fantastic. You all are doing brilliantly with the Instagram posts that you're all sending me with all your work. It's at M Stuart Paintings. So my name is Murray. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, we have lots of tutorials coming up on the screen on the right hand side now. So thank you very much. Take care, everybody, and see you soon. Bye.